let's dive right into it. Well, let's take a look at the setups yesterday. Um, uh, we have PPI news. PPI news came out yesterday, and PPI came out at 8:30 yesterday. Here it is, All right there, 8:30. Remember, we only look for two setups. We look for a momentum setup, and we look for a uh, zone setup. So going into the news, we were already down going into the news at 7 o'clock. So at 7 o'clock, we were uh, headed down um, and only looking for short setups going into the PPI number. So you can see the zone was red going into the PPI number. So we were looking for net shorts, net shorts only. Let me let me get these supply lines off here real quick. Demands, just so you can see it a little better. One sec. So we were we're already going into. We were going into the news event already with a. Uh, uh, bias short. So we're going bias short because the zones were red. The zones are red. We're looking to short. So the zones are red. So we're looking for a short bias. So what you want to do is you want to look for the first, right when the news popped, we had uh, the FZR, a little too fast for everybody right now because that was 18 seconds after the news came out. But these zones are very, very effective on catching reversals. Uh, this is where the arrow fired. At the um, at around 8:30, 18 seconds after news came out, but the next one came out. You had the Momo setup that came out here. This is a Tweezer Extreme Momo. So we had the FZR. I sent these charts out yesterday. Full zone retracement with the reversal arrow. Then we had the Tweezer that came out. That's a double Doge with the arrow that fires below 20, which is an extreme Momo. I love these setups. There's a strategy, which I'm going to show you in a second, that specifically will take these trades. And I'm going to show you how you can take all these trades like this, or you can trade multiple uh, uh, MOMOs uh, with, uh, depending on the strength that you want, on the swings that you want, less trades or more trades. I'm going to go over that in a second. But then here was the one to jump on. I always educate traders, listen. Stay out of the no trade zone five minutes before the news and five minutes after the news. Now, this is how you want to trade news events. So you want to stay five minutes before the news and five minutes after the news. So here's 25. Get this right here. Vertical. Let's see. So here's 25 and here's 35. Five minutes before, five minutes after the news. This I call the no trade zone. The reason I call this the no trade zone, you really don't want to be, if you're going to do the automated algorithm that we have, or if you're going to do this manually trading yourself, you really don't want to get into uh, this no trade zone because the market's is to, trying to whip around. It has no direction typically. And you don't want, I've seen over the years that, it can rally on bad news and solve on good news. So you really don't know which direction it's going to go until they they get a direction with the news event. So the rule of thumb is you want to go five minutes before the news. Don't trade five minutes before the news and five minutes after the news. After that, it's time to go to work. So that's a no trade zone, right? Five minutes before, five minutes after. The best thing to do, and I, I cannot stress this enough, and it's a free uh, service they use. I'm actually working on it so it will post in the side of your chart for you every single uh, morning you log in. We had one a while back that did that on Ninja 7. Need to convert that over to Ninja 8. Uh, but if you look, what we need to do is we need to go to forexfactory.com before news and just go over to uh, forex, forexfactory.com, go over to filter. And uncheck the yellow, uncheck the orange. You can save it this way. And uncheck all these currencies and go against the USD and hit apply filter. What you'll see is you'll see today, Friday, February 17th, we have no news events. 
But yesterday we had a red impact number, Thursday, 8.30 a.m. Eastern. So you don't want to trade the algorithm five minutes before this news event or five minutes after. The day before that we had CPI, I mean retail sales, sorry, on Wednesday, the 15th. And the 14th we had CPI this week. So you don't want to trade five minutes before and five minutes after those news events. Now, you can print the weekly calendar out like this, very simple to do, where you can print the whole week, and it shows these for the whole entire week. So you can go in the whole entire week, and it'll show you, um, it'll show you the whole week of February um, this week, and then, or you can go next week, and you can find out the whole uh, entire week what they're going to be doing, news events, and so on. So do that, okay, ForexFactory.com. So once you're in the no trades uh, out of the no trade zone, we want to stock trades. Okay, we want to start stocking trades, and the algorithm picked it up perfect uh, because you got a, a momo that happened right exactly at 8:36, and this started the whole move down. And you traders were posting the room that you were on top of this. Good job. Some of you traders are posting you were short here. I believe Sal, you jumped on it. You know, Leo, I believe you. Uh, I know Sal, you're posting that you jumped on. So, you know, you want to get into that little Momo setup right there. That Momo, because the oscillator was below 20, or 480, sorry, and we got the arrow that fired. At this trade, the live fill was uh, 26 short S&P. My target on the S&P in the morning, uh, we said the overall target would be 4,100 for the day. It got down to 4,098 in the morning at 938. So look at the potential you had right there alone, 26 and three quarters, all the way to 98. My target's 4,100 major support that I talked about on the microphone that we, we, we discussed on the mic. Um, and then we discussed that uh, that would be major support uh, of, of a swing to 43.50 from 4,100, or if it closed below it, a swing maybe to 38.50. So um, 40.98, so you had Almost 30 S&P points to the downside. That is 120 tick potential just on that first wave down. If you missed the first wave, we had one here, a Momo tree that happened at 9.03. And then right after the New York Open, we had one at 9.35. So we did have uh, a demand line down there that we hit earlier. Um, that, that was my first target we hit earlier. Um, and a magnet that brought us right to price. But that's how you trade the news. Then what the market did is we came up and we had a trend change. These trend changes are great. Now, you can trade this on the algorithm uh, with the automated version. I have a toggle switch for this. Or you can do it manually trading. But the first wave is always the best. The first wave says, I got a trend change. Now we go to green zones. This is where the market just got cranked hard to the downside. And 4,100 was major support. And it comes down to 4,100, and we find support. We know that's the strength, of the, the, the support in the market here. We knew that all the way to up here, that that was support. We were calling that out as support all the way up for the short, down into support. There's our support level. And then we had a trend change. A trend change is categorized by opposite color, um, opposite color zones with, with the news event. We know it's going to be volatile. And we could have a big short covering rally. And this is called a first wave trade. <clears throat> it's a first trade after a trend change. I love first wave trades. This is the first wave. So we have a first wave trade. And it goes right into a Momo trade. We now are above 20. We got a high momentum in the market. And the market just explodes to the upside. <clears throat> then we come into an extreme Momo. We're above 80. Stream over, and then we can go to FCRs. <clears throat> then we come into the new noon event. Now, I I don't like per se trading from 11:30. Another no trade zone that I don't prefer trading is 11:30 to one o'clock. Actually, I say one one to one fifteen. So this is another no trade zone on a daily basis. 11:30. Right in that one fifteen level. That's another no trade zone because what happens is is you get you get the volume that dissipates and you you're getting the, the the London market that's closing at 11 
London's open from 3 to 11. It's open longer than the U.S. market. It's actually the longest session of any market out there, the London. So you get the London that closes 11, and so you see this volume sort of dissipate, and so this is another no trade zone with news. If it's a news event, it's a no trade zone. So if you look at it, I got a no trade zone five minutes before news and five minutes after. I got a heck of a trade of 30 points to the downside potential, and these are great too. I get a first wave up. This is a great one. Uh, uh, 41, 14, 15 is a high of that bar. It got as high as 45. Another 30 points to the downside. So we had 30 point potential to the downside potential. 30 points is 120 ticks. We have 30 points to the upside. Another 30 points, 120 ticks. So that's <clears throat> right there, 240 tick potential in the wave down and wave up. Then we go to no trade zone. Then the market comes back. I always tell traders to start stalking the trades from about 115 into the market close. Right? We come right into it, and they get busy right away. They have another trend change. Here's a trend change that happens. Trend change happens. We get green to red. Algo picks it up. This is my favorite combination. I love this combination. I get all giddy when I see this combination. You go into an FZR directly into momentum setup. If you see a trend, if you see a trend change, or if you see the first wave as an F FZR, and this first lower high is a momentum setup for sales, our first higher low, and it's very tight like this. This is a MOMO because we're above, we're below 80 when the arrow fires. This is one of my one of my favorite combinations. It is a FCR MOMO setup. This provided another great opportunity. If we look at the uh, the low of that bar, which would be a uh, would be a mimicking a live fill plus or minus a couple ticks, 29 a quarter, and she pushed all the way into the close. Gosh, all the way to five was 85. So 45 ticks, over 200 ticks. 200 ticks of potential to the downside. So you had 240 in the morning and 240 ticks potential to the afternoon. So you're looking well over almost 700 ticks. Or, I'm sorry, 240, and then the, um, um, yeah, and then we had that big push to the downside, 200. So almost uh, the 500 tick potential to the downside. We went into Momo, came into another Momo, FCR, 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 and the trade came all the way back down to the lows. Now, that's trading news event. So if you skinny down the whole entire session, that's your trading plan right there. We have five minutes before the news. You don't want to trade five minutes after, no trade zone. We come right into it. We get into the first MOMO potential 30-point downside. We came down to support level. We had a trend change. We got a first wave MOMO up, 30 points potential to the upside, 120 potential ticks. We go into the no trade zone, 1130 to 115. We come back, have a couple FCRs, first targets hit. Nice. Not much. Have the trend change for the continuation. For the continuation, you go into the FCR MOMO, and we drop. 200 plus ticks into the close. Now, what happens with when you have a big down or big up, you get these counter moves. Remember, if I take this swing high and this swing low, what we did is we went into this 62% retracement. The market likes to retrace 62 to that 76% retracement for continuation. So when you get these counter moves, I always like to see where it can continue for a continuation. Take that high and that low. Look where it reversed. It reversed right at 62%. Trend change. And then we got cranked to the downside. So a lot of traders that don't have the software will try to just short this level up here and trying to time that. Well, with our software, the timing is, is nice because we only have two trade setups. We only look for the FCR and MOMO setup. So we know how to, how to uh, you know, time that setup. Now, what we have is is we have this. We have two strategies coming out to you. We have a momentum. This is this morning's trade so far. Today I got short at 75 and a quarter and it covered at 73 and a half. Not much this morning. 
that this is going a thousand ticks on all four contracts though. It did, and here's your potential, 75 and a quarter and as low as 63 and a quarter. So it, it provided you 12 ticks of potential. So 48 ticks to the downside this morning so far. All right. Yesterday, it was 17 and a half to 25. 7 points, 28 ticks of potential. This is the big one yesterday that happened. It was 58 and a half short all the way down to 8. It had a 50 point 200 tick algo automated drop from this level. Day before that, it had a small stop. Day before that, it had a run of 29 and a half to 44, another 14 point move. So this is strictly momentum trading. Day before that, 28 to 59, another 30 point potential move. Day before that, 63 to 47 and a half, another 15 point move. So this is off of my 30 Renko, when you root 30 Renko, you can go 20 and go anything you want. But here's how I made this. This is, this is strictly momentum. Now check this strat you guys are going to be getting. Okay, now check this out. This strategy... I made very simple for you. I want you to check this out. What I did is I included all the Momo ingredients into this strategy. However, I made strong Momos and weak Momos. What that means is this. I got a trend filter that I built in for you, and this is already finished. All right? I got to change this label here from trail. I'll have to do that yet, but... Uh, the trend, I have a trend filter where you put the moving averages in where I only take Momo trades a trend. I have it off because honest, uh, I really like the, the counter moves on this as well as the moves. If you just want trend trades, click that. But I got what's called a, a retracement strength. So if I put the retracement strength to zero and I click enable, then what it's going to tell me is, is I'm looking for trades that have very little pause. Meaning the market is looking for fast continuation moves. So it's not looking for, it's looking for very little pauses in the market. And it's going to cherry pick these trades for you when the market has vertical momentum movement. Okay? So you can pick the strength of your swings. If I want to, if I want to take more swings, I'm going to increase my strength with the Momo, meaning if I want that market to oscillate more after Momo comes up, I'm going to increase my retracement strength. So I'm going to go over this in the conference call with members, so I'm going to increase it to one. If I want to increase it to two, I can increase it to three with more trades, increase it to four more trades, increase it to five. I have everything built in. This retracement strength is going to be based upon what was the swing going into that momentum entry. If I got a straight drop and I have zero, that means I have a straight momentum trade that's going vertical immediately after a momentum setup happens ha occurs. So what it's telling me is, is that I've got serious momentum to the downside. So zero is going to be the best momentum trade you're going to have. Meaning I got serious momentum to the downside. Serious momentum. If I go to a one as, as a strength, or I got serious momentum to the upside. I got serious momentum to the upside. Okay. If I go one as the momentum strength, then that means the market is going to, if I take one, where is it at? If I put one as my, my retracement strength, that means there's going to be a little pause before the Momo comes up. If I put two, there's going to be larger pauses before the Momo comes up, meaning the market's consolidating more, and you go all the way up four, three, four, five, six, seven. If I go sing, if I if I click in two, and I click in single single strength, it's going to look for 
for two only, uh, meaning co consolidation, the mark's consolidated on this swing only. Let's say you like this swing only, uh, or let's say you like the zero swing of only taking fast momentum trades only. It will only look for fast momentum trades, period. Let's say you want to look for wider momentum trades where the consolidation is a little bit more, where it's accumulation distribution. You want to take five only on the swing, the swings. So you can you can put your strength in as much as you want or less as you want. And this will increase your accuracy or decrease your accuracy, meaning add more trades or less trades. Um, the target one, target two, target three, target four, the stop, I have a hard stop in. This I gotta change this right now to, to trail. Okay, I put I accidentally put stop in there again. This is my trail of 38. You can lengthen it. Let's say if I lengthen it to 72, right? I've got my start time and stop time. So I have everything built into the to the algorithm. Everything's built in for you. There, it's, it's very easy for you to test on all these markets, very easy to see because I've built the strength indicator on the Momo setup already into this. Look, you don't have a lot of variables and you don't have, I mean, a lot of parameters. I have everything built into the strat. All right, so if I do this then, and if I click 72, then look what happens. It widens your ATR trail. Now my ATR is widened my trail, or you can keep a tight trail, or you can keep a wide trail on the ATR, depending how you want to do it. And, oops, I got to hit. Yeah, so you can hit a wide ATR trail, or you can hit a... Um, you hit a wide ATR trail, or you can hit a uh, um, as tight as you want. So, so depending how you want to do it, get that back off. Put my signal. Put my signal high. Sorry. Put that back to zero. That's my top one. I'm going to show you how the trail works. Click it on. So now, if you want a really wide trail and let it breathe more, you can do that. And you can let the trades breathe more if you want. If you want this trail to be tighter against price, you can tighten it up. Now watch when I just tighten the trail up, which it says stop. I got to change that to trail. So I go down to 38, and now I'll tighten your trail up. What I also did with this is this is strictly momentum. See how tight it tight the trail is. What I also did is I had the algo simulate live fills at the high of the bar like our other algos. We know we fill live. We're at the high of these bars. So when you back test this, so if I back test this, now remember historical, uh, historical is not indicative of future results. So don't, you know, take these with a grain of salt. But if I just hit, if I go in here and I hit strategy performance and I hit historical, this is just the last couple of days. This is just from 214 to 217 on four contracts on the big contract. Largest winning trade is 2400 Largest losing trade is 112 bucks. You know, profit factor 45 This is a Momo setups only. So, but this, what I'm saying is, is that I have it so you can go right away and you can find out pretty much what what looks pretty good just back testing before you start forward testing this on sim and so on and start uh, market market replaying. This works really good on strategy analyzer. So what you can do with this too, right? You can go into strategy analyzer. This works really well. I'm going to show you how to do this. You'll go into strategy analyzer. And we're going to do this in the conference calls. So when you click Strategy Analyzer, it will come over. You will click Back Test, and you'll look where was it? Uh, I have a J Trader named J Trader right now. We're going to name it Sim Trader. But you can see what we'll do is we'll go into Walk Forward Optimization or Optimization, and then what you can do is you can back test what instrument you have and what the best variables are for you and the instrument as long back as you want. So we'll go over that also. Okay, you can strategy, I just ran the strategy test on it last night because I got this done now. This is finished. I just got to change the labeling on the one stop. So you're going to be getting this also and this is strictly 
momentum trading only. If we go, you can go to the small micros. That's what I like for a lot of traders to do. This is a big contract. But same thing, if you go in the small micros, it's pretty much going to mimic what the large contract does on the small micros. So you, you can do those small micros also. But if you go into the small micros, this is just the last three days. Uh, where was it? 12, 14, 12, 17. Um, we had a drawdown of 25 bucks, 14, 45. Remember, when I show you performance, guys, take with a grain of salt. You'll have it on your own. This is an educational trading room. We're trying to give you the edge in the market, but obviously previous uh, historical performance don't is not indicative of future results. That's why you guys sign risk disclaimers. We all know that. But um, you can see it's done well this week just off of the, this is just strictly Momo. All right, so you can do that. Uh, you can run it off the big contract or small contract. Uh, what I find, sometimes the minis don't catch all of the, like we had a, a trade on the big contract this morning and not the small contract. They're pretty close. They're very, very close. Um, sometimes the, the, the larger contract will catch those. See, um, actually it would have caught that if I had one. So because there's a small pause in the market, if I had one or less, it would have caught that. So where's my strength to one? And it caught this wave down here this morning. All right, so um, that's actually in a trade right now. We're long. It's long right now. That's actually long on the big contract right now um, as far as that goes. So, you know, you just, you can as far as that uh, uh, that goes.